All right, we're locating points on the small intestine channel. And usually when we locate these points on the model, we have them position their arm in a karate chop position. And that just gives us a nice straight line for the small intestine channel. Now, obviously we wouldn't needle with someone in this position, but this is just for practice. SI1 is on the little finger, 0.1 soon from the corner of the nail, on the ulnar side of the little finger. SI2 and 3 are on either side of the metacarpophalangeal joint, kind of like how LI2 and 3 are on either side of the joint, or spleen 2 and 3 are on either side of the joint. So SI2 is in the depression distal to the metacarpophalangeal joint, and SI3 is in the depression just proximal to the head of the fifth metacarpal bone. So even though I just said we do a karate chop position for these two points, it's going to be a little bit easier if you make a loose fist and that's really going to open up these depressions. It's going to make it easier to locate these points and it's also going to make it much more comfortable to needle on the patient. So SI4 and 5 are on either side of the triquetral bone. So if I come down the side of the hand, I'm feeling the fifth metacarpal bone. Then I feel the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. And the next bump after that is the triquetral bone. And I, if I keep going, I feel the head of the ulna. So SI4 is between the base of the fifth metacarpal and the triquetral bone. And SI5 is between the triquetral bone and the head of the ulna. So these two points are really close together, but there's definitely two distinct depressions. So SI6 is a fun one. SI6 is on the ulnar styloid process, and with her arm positioned like this, it's a bump, but when she, if she rotates to lay her hand flat on her chest, the bump becomes a hole. So that's how we're gonna needle it like this, in this little hole, or we could call it a cleft, because SI6 is the she cleft point of the SI channel. After that, we skip ahead to SI8 in order to establish our line of the SI channel. So SI8 is in the depression between the olecranon process and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So we find bony thing, bony thing, and then come halfway for SI8. And for this one, make sure that you're locating the medial epicondyle of the humerus. If people make a mistake, they come to the other side of the olecranon. So make sure you're on the medial side of the olecranon process for SI8. So now that we have our line from SI5 to SI8, we can find SI7. SI7 is 5 soon proximal to SI5. So SI5 to SI8 is 12 soon. Cut it in half gives us 6 soon. Cut it in half again gives us 3 soon. Now we can just visually divide it 3, 4, 5, 6. We want 5 soon for SI5. And so we can say that this is on the line from SI5 to SI8, but really we're feeling for this groove between the belly of the muscle and the ulnar bone. So we can just feel for this groove or this channel between the muscle and the bone for SI7. After that, we're on the back. SI9 is one soon above the end of the axillary crease. Then for SI10, we just keep going up into, until we're right below the spine of the scapula. So what's going on here is we can feel some uh, muscle coming across, which is teres minor and the attachment of infraspinatus. With SI9, we're just below that muscle. SI10, we're just on the other side above the muscle. So sometimes we needle halfway in between to go directly into those shoulder muscles. And technically that's an extra point called Jian Hou, but sometimes just people say we're needling SI9 and a half. So SI9 is below, SI10 is above, just below the spine of the scapula. So SI11 is a little bit interesting to find. So here we can see the spine of the scapula. So what we're gonna do first is find the midpoint of the spine of the scapula, and then find the lower border of the midpoint of the spine of the scapula. And that's our first landmark. Then we're gonna come down and find the angle of the scapula, and then we divide that into thirds, and SI11 is the 
upper third of that line. So sometimes people say that this should be an equilateral triangle with SI9 and SI10, and I feel like sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't. So, but the other way to find it is find the spine of the scapula, find the midpoint of the spine of the scapula, come to the lower border of the midpoint of the spine of the scapula, then find the angle and divide it into thirds for SI11. For SI12, we're again finding the spine of the scapula, find the midpoint of the spine of the scapula, and then come above the spine in the center of the suprascapular fossa for SI12. So SI13 is above the spine of the scapula at the medial end. So what you can do is you can take your fingers and grab onto the spine of the scapula like you're a duck, and just quack, quack, quack over to the medial end to find SI13. So some things to remember about SI13 is number one, you're definitely above the spine of the scapula, and then make sure that you're definitely on the scapula. If you go too far, you fall off the border onto the UB channel, so make sure that you're on the scapula for SI13. And then another way we can locate this point is find SI10 and find T2 and come halfway for SI13. The thing is, if you do it this way, you just have to make sure that you're correctly locating SI10 and that you're correctly locating T2 to come halfway. I don't like this method quite as much just because I feel like people tend to have trouble locating those landmarks. After that, SI14 is level with the lower border of T1, three soon lateral from the midline. So I think the easiest way to find the vertebrae is lower border of the spine of the scapula lines up with the lower border of T3. Then we just count up T3, T2, T1. And then for our three soon, we use the medial border of the scapula to give us three soon out for SI14. For SI15, we come up to C7, and now we do two soon out for SI15. So now that we have all our points down, we can kind of see this zigzag pattern with the line. So we start at SI8, the channel comes up over to LI14, and then SI9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And after that, we're going to go on to the neck. After that, we're on the neck. SI16 is on the posterior border of the SCM, level with the laryngeal prominence. So here we can see the SCM. And so we're on the posterior border, level with the laryngeal prominence. So remember here, on the anterior border, we have stomach 9. Between the two heads is LI18, and on the posterior border is SI16, all level with the laryngeal prominence and all window of heaven points. SI17 is between the angle of the mandible and the anterior border of the SCM. SI18 is directly below the outer canthus in the depression at the lower border of the zygomatic bone. SI19 is between the condyloid process of the mandible and the center of the tragus. So for this one to locate it, we'll have her open her mouth and we can see this nice depression here. And so we locate our point there. And when we're needling, uh, we'll needle the point with the jaw open, but then after we have the needle in, we can have her close the jaw and just rest like that. So that's SI 16, 17, 18, and 19.